My name is Chris Sorby and I am very blessed to be the Educational Artistic Director for Redkin Fifth Avenue and also I'm the president of Chris Sorby Incorporated which is a mentoring company um, and educational company under my own brand. So I want to tell you or I want to share a story with you that is about somebody that really impressed me the way that she made things happen. She wanted to further her career and decided that the only way she could do that was by reaching out to people to, um, to be mentors to her. And she wasn't um, just thinking about herself. She actually wanted to do this um, for the school that she was at, which was a beautiful Paul Mitchell School on Long Island. And um, so anyway, she got in touch with me via my website and she asked if I would do um, a guest, they have like on a Wednesday afternoon, they have guest speakers in. So she said, would you come and do that? I was like, yeah, tell me more about it. So um, anyway, she said, well, you know, we'd like you to do a little bit of hair and then to talk about how was it that you got to where you are today? I was like, yeah, sure. So. I show up there on the day and um, and her one of her learning leaders says to me, you know, Jasmine couldn't make it today. And I was like, oh no, that's terrible. She said, oh yeah, she's broken hearted, but her son was sick, so she couldn't, she couldn't be here. And I said, well, please tell her to give me a call and I would love to take her out to lunch and maybe we can make up for that. So, um, do you want me to stop? Um, no, you're okay. I didn't take that out. Oh, so then I now we've stopped. Should I wait till they've? You're fine. I think you're okay. Okay. You're no, you're good. You're good. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I said, you know, I would love to take her out to lunch, and um, so we did the program, and then a few weeks later, I took Jasmine to lunch, and over lunch, she was terribly nervous and I'm like why are you nervous she said because of who you are and I said well I'm nobody and she said but you are you know she said you're you're someone that we all look up to and we admire we respect and I said but yeah but I'm human you know no one um, regardless of what level or position they get to in life ever started out that way <laughs> So I was like, oh, don't worry about it. Let's just enjoy our lunch. And over lunch, I was telling her about a competition that we at Redkin were running at the time, and it was called Rotanaha. And I said, you should enter. She's like, really? I said, yeah. I said, you know, the winners get mentored by either Chris Barron, who's one of the education artistic directors, and myself. Um, well, no, separately. There's two winners. One of them gets this Chris, one of them gets the other Chris. And um, so she was like, well, okay, that was it. Finished lunch, hugged her, put her in a taxi, off she went. Anyway, then a few weeks later, we, uh, we do the judging of the Road to Naha competition and, and we narrow it down and we had you know, editors from the industry involved and so on. And there was a lot of entries and uh, lovely entries. So we finally nail it down to these two judges, uh, to these two entrants. And one of them lived on Long Island and the other one lived, I forget somewhere else where she, she lives. I know her name is Brooklyn, but she didn't live in Brooklyn. So um, she, so I said to Chris Barron, I said, can I take the girl that lives on Long Island because then I can meet up more face to face with her. He's like, sure. So that was that. So our first point of contact was a three-way call between the winner, which was a girl called Jasmine, and um, we had someone from our PR department at Redkin and myself. So we're chat, 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 so on. And um, we, I said, you know, you're so close to where I live. Why don't you just come over and we can have a look at what your ideas are and and what your inspiration is and, and kind of get the ball rolling on how we could put this Naha shoot together. She's like, yeah, that would be great. So anyway, the day comes, I open the front door and there's the Jasmine that I took out to lunch who was the student from the Paul Mitchell Academy. And I'm like, 
what are you doing here? She said, I was the winner, but I didn't know if I would get you into trouble that you had done a talk at a Paul Mitchell school when you actually worked with Redkin. I was like, oh my God, I was so happy. The reason I'm sharing that story with you is had Jasmine not um, taken uh, her the plunge or the courage to reach out, and I don't know if I'm the only person she reached out to, I actually never asked her that question, perhaps I should, and, um, and she reached out to me to say, you know, I've looked at your website, I admire what you do, I, I love, you know, what you're about, where you came from, would you, you know, can we meet, would you do a talk at Paul Mitchell? And I was blown away by her courage because I'm not sure I would have ever done that um, in my career. I was very, very blessed with the people that I, um, the people I was surrounded by became then the greatest hairdressers that are still alive today, except for one. And, um, and, and I, as I said, I would never have reached out. I mean, beside the fact that internet didn't exist then. So unless you read about somebody in the British Hairdressers Journal, we were clueless because we couldn't research and look and find and, and choose our mentors. And that's what I so admire about Jasmine doing just that. And I'm not the only mentor she's had. She's chosen Vivian McKinder as well. And I, as I said, I don't know who else. But I encourage you to really trust that if you reach out, you will get response. You will, it, you know, it's so easy to communicate now with whoever it is that you admire that it's just taking the courage to do that instead of listening to the little voice that's saying to you, huh, they won't want to talk to you. You know, they wouldn't want to do a selfie with you. Hell we would. You know, it's um, when people are passionate about the industry, and I am one of those, we'll do anything, absolutely anything, to help you guys that are our next generation. If someone had shared with me what I would be delighted to share with any young hairdresser, that would have made my journey way less painful and a whole lot shorter. So all I'm gonna say is, you know, think about that ship that it is that you're dreaming of. You're standing in the place that it's being built. It's actually your shoes are in that position. So don't hold back at all, just go for it, do it, connect, and surround yourself with like-minded people. You know, I want to share with you the, uh, the importance of surrounding yourself by like-minded people. And let me just explain a little bit more what I mean by that. When I was growing up in my career, I was very, very blessed to be supported by and surrounded by the hairdressers that we now know to be the greatest hairdressers probably in the world. And they certainly weren't then. You know, I'm talking about people like Trevor Sorby. Um, well, I slept with him. No, I was married to him, that's right. Um, and then um, Robert Labetta, Anthony Muscolo. You know, these people were friends of mine. And I was extremely blessed to have that. Now, at the time that we were all hanging out and, you know, and friends and doing hair jams and things like that, we, not one of us ever thought, oh, one day we're going to be standing on a stage at Las Vegas in front of a crowd of 10,000 hairdressers and, and have a label of, oh, artistic director of Redkin. I didn't, I, that wasn't in my wildest dreams. I couldn't have even you know, thought that one up. But the point I'm trying to make is it happened. And if it can happen to um, the kid of a Polish peasant in London, it can happen to anyone. And that's why I, I truly encourage you to reach out to people that are as serious and as passionate about hairdressing as you are because it doesn't have to be 
a Robert Lebetra, an Anthony Muscolo. It can be somebody that is in the chair next to you that just happens to live, breathe, and, um, and almost eat hair as much as you do. Because it's, it's really tough to do something alone. When I first, um, when I uh, created Ombre, that was, it was around 21 uh, years ago. And everyone told me I was crazy. They said, no one is gonna wanna wear dark roots because that was all that they saw. And it didn't, regardless of me trying to explain that, but this is not just dark roots. Look at how this color evolves down this strand of hair. And the only people that really got that and understood it were the people that were surround me because we were all as crazy as people thought, as each other. And that's the point that I'm trying to make. Don't let anyone hold you back. Doesn't matter if they say you're crazy, think, good, I nailed it. But believe it in your heart that what you've done is absolutely beautiful because it is to your eye, regardless of other people's eyes. And sometimes you, like me, might have to wait 21 years for the rest of the world to wear it. But hey, sometimes things take a little longer than they do other times. Enjoy the journey though.